Hey everyone, it's Michael. Today I'm going to be doing a review for another Give Yourself Goosebumps book. Of course, this is number 32. It's only a nightmare. Um, I did not really look forward to this, honestly. I was just kind of like, oh, well, you could do a Give Yourself Goosebumps book with dreams or nightmares, and that could be really cool. And it really surprised me, honestly, by how much fun this was. Again, I'm a big fan of the Give Yourself Goosebumps fans. I've read about, or books, excuse me, I've read about uh, about close to 10 of these. I've always had a really good time, pretty much. I think there was only one that I thought was kind of lackluster, but this is really good, too. This is another solid one. At least the first half of the book is, uh, in my opinion. The second half of the book kind of let me down. We'll get more into that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's only a nightmare. It's slowly, it's, it's like climbing in how much it's worth online, like on Amazon. I think I bought my copy for maybe 12 or $13 you know, used. It's got a couple of scratches and marks on it. Um, I'm a little surprised by how much this is gaining traction to become one of the more expensive <clears throat> and more difficult to find Give Yourself Goosebumps books. Uh, but still, I had a good time reading it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't one of my favorites of the series so far, whether it be Goosebumps or the Give Yourself Goosebumps book, book series alone. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know what Give Yourself Goosebumps is, if this happens to be the first time you've come across this, this is basically a choose-your-own-adventure book, or a game book, if you will, where you have each page, <clears throat> after you get the general plot going, you'll have dis you'll have kind of basically choices you have to make. Uh, you'll have choice A, which will be on page such and such. You don't just read through the book like a regular book. You might have, you know, you might be on page 5 and it'll tell you for choice A, you go to page 107 choice B or C or D, if there's multiple choices past just two, you'll go to a different page and you kind of read the whole book out of order. And I always read the whole thing to try to get all the endings and everything. And I had such a good time reading this. It was really fun. Again, for the first half of the book, I really, really loved this. And then the second half of the book kind of let me down. Uh, to basically start off with the plot here, essentially this was a summertime book review I could have done. And I'm still kind of let down by that after finding that out now. I mean, it's still technically summertime with it being August. But I was hoping that I could read all of these summertime-based books for Goosebumps, which is typically almost always nothing but camp books, which is horrifying because there's a lot of camp books. I digress. <laughs> so this book is actually a sort of summertime book, but not really. It's more focused on the aspects of nightmares and dreams and stuff. And basically, you and your family are on a vacation and you're staying at an inn, or a lodge, whatever that is, whatever this thing is supposed to be. And it seems to me as though your main character has these horrible nightmares all the time of this guy called the Sleep Master, which is also this fellow here on the cover, this really cool looking design. I don't know who that's, you know, made by, that, that design choice, but he's cool looking. The Sleep Master, I personally think, is one of the best Goosebumps characters ever. I don't know if he pops up in any more Give Yourself Goosebumps books or anything like that, but he is so much fun. I loved reading about him in this book, and I love the philosophy behind what he uh, kind of tries to explain to our main character of what reality is. But anyway, the Sleep Master scares our main character quite a bit, and our main character is afraid to go to sleep. So the Sleep Master himself is kind of, in a weird way, a small ripoff of Freddy Krueger, and I love it. It's great. He's great. You know, it's really enjoyable. One of the first choices you get to make in the book is that you can either stay in your bed and try to go back to sleep, but there's also these gargoyles around your bed. There's four gargoyles, one for each bed post, and those frighten you. They may or may not be moving. They may or may not be winking at you and making little noises and saying things to you. Each of them are different, like one's a dog, one's a devil, you know? Very interesting stuff. Uh, one's a human without a face. I thought that would be utilized a whole lot more to be scary, but it wasn't. Uh, this is actually the second half of the book that I talked about that I read personally. I read it in that order. Um, this portion of the book I did not enjoy. I didn't enjoy that much. Basically, this line of the story, because you have really two major storylines you can go through when it comes to give yourself goosebumps books. This through line is more focused on this bed, as you're told by the gargoyles who scare you, that you can do whatever you want to and you can also manipulate reality if you fall asleep in this bed dreaming what you want to dream. Very interesting premise. Some stories are more satisfying than others in the finales and everything else with these stories and they're fine. Um, 
I actually prefer the first half of the book that I read, which is more focused on instead of staying in the bed, you can actually get up and go downstairs and try to find something to eat in the kitchen, but you're also scared of the inn itself because it's kind of creepy and dark. And so you kind of go through and you actually, this is actually more tied to the Sleep Master storyline. The Gargoyles one I just talked about kind of doesn't talk about the Sleep Master all that much, but the going downstairs option actually has you focused a lot more on the Sleep Master idea. And I enjoyed that immensely. I think the Sleep Master story, pretty much all the endings tied to that are really fun. There's one particular part that I really want to talk about here that I was so just giddy and excited over. I don't know why this struck me in such a weird, nostalgic way, but it was fun. Sometimes, to give yourself goosebumps, they'll reference the classic 62-era book series from, you know, when Goosebumps started. And this was running kind of at the same time as Goosebumps, the classic series. So they'll have references every once in a while to the old books. Well, they had this one section, your main character actually stops in the library and was kind of looking to see if they could find a book that might put them to sleep. And the main character happens to find a Goosebumps book. And we all know, of course, this is, like I said, listed as number 32 of Goosebumps. Give yourself Goosebumps. The main character looks at the number and it's like, give yourself Goosebumps number 458 or seven or six, something like that. It's really, really far gone down the line. And I thought that was a really cool tongue-in-cheek parody of how many Goosebumps books R.L. Stein had already written at the time, but was already kind of predicting to write or work on with Ghost Riders or whatever ended up happening there. It doesn't matter to me. They're all fun, typically. Um, but it just kind of showed <laughs> that humor that R.L. Stein can make fun of himself. And it was fun. I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, really silly, really over the top, really wild and crazy and enjoyable. And like I said, the whole Sleep Master character, I love him. Again, he has this Freddy Krueger type feel to him. Freddy Krueger, of course, is one of my favorite monster movie villains of all time. He's so much fun, especially when the second film and so on goes behind that film. He's so just over the top and wild and funny, making puns and stuff. Sleep Master kind of does that too. I really enjoyed this book. I had a really good time reading it. If you haven't read Give Yourself Goosebumps number 32, It's Only a Nightmare, I could definitely recommend this to you. Really good one. I wish it had a different outline, like a border to the cover outside of this art that I enjoy. Uh, it would have been interesting to see what Tim Jacobus would have done, if this is not Tim Jacobus. I don't think this is, though. It doesn't look like his style. Um, but still, I enjoyed the Sleep Master. Pretty cool character. Like I said, half the book I really, really loved and the other half was just kind of whatever. It's kind of meandering, honestly. I didn't think it was as engaging or even fun compared to most Give Yourself Goosebumps adventures. Uh, even the least of those, I don't think the second half of this book based around the Gargoyle storyline and the choosing your whole reality thing, I don't think it was as engaging. One thing I love about both lines that you can do, either the Gargoyle storyline or the Sleep Master storyline, one thing that I loved about both so much is that when you're in the dreamland, right, and you're kind of falling asleep and getting involved in this place, or whatever happens if the sleep master drags you out there, however your story gets started with you ending up asleep and in dreams, one of the coolest things about it is that you can be in the middle of something and then something else completely random happen to you. You might be ready to be in the middle of a baseball game scoring home runs, and then all of a sudden you just pop into a circus, you know, riding an elephant or anything like that, a stampede, a, a knight in shining armor could come after you and start chopping you up. You know, just really fun, wild stuff. There were some really cool endings in here, and then there were some that weren't as good, in my opinion. Uh, but for the most part, this is still a good Give Yourself Goosebumps book, and a good Goosebumps book in general. I recommend it. I liked it. I recommend it, for, especially for collectors, people who are totally obsessed with Goosebumps. You better get it soon, though. Like I said, it seems to be like this is kind of disappearing a little bit more and more on the Internet and getting more and more expensive for the Give Yourself line. But I'm thankful I have it. I'm blessed to be able to read it. And again, yeah, if I had to rate this book on a five-star basis, I'd probably give this closer to a, maybe a three out of five. It's a high three out of five, though, because like I said, the portion about the Sleep Master is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. I really like the utilization of the Sleep Master storylines based around how he can manipulate himself the entire dreamland that you're involved with. It was very fun. He has this very pandering attitude towards the main character that you play as. I really love this. I couldn't recommend it enough to you guys if you haven't checked it out before. But what are your thoughts? Put your thoughts down below, guys. Thank you for watching. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today, and goodbye.